Hello everybody, today we will know how to make a fully automated process by using Microsoft SQL Server. After watching this video, you will learn how to do the hard work only once, and after that you don't have to do anything at all. Not exactly, but maybe you will just have to monitor it. Actually, no, she will monitor herself and let you know. Let us see how to do this. First, we have to get our process written very well, tested, debugged, handle all the scenarios that might happen, and we save this process in a store procedure. Second, we will know how to configure the database email in order to send us a notification when this process is done. Third, we will know how to configure Microsoft SQL Server agent to schedule this process on regular basis. Step number one, get our process ready. In the previous video, we knew how to transfer the data from Microsoft Access to Microsoft SQL Server using the wizard. And we have made the store procedure to transfer this data into our structure. Okay, remember we have run the wizard do the exact same thing using Management Studio version 10.50, not later than that because it will create problem with the version of the package. Run this wizard exactly as we run it last time until you reach the last step when it says run immediately. Please check on save SSIS package and choose file system, press next and choose where to save this package give it a proper name and put it always where the sql server instance is installed don't put it in another machine because this machine might be down or it's not accessible and that result the package will fail to run now the data transfer package is ready the store procedure is ready from the previous time now we have to wrap them in a store procedure which will control the main process it will be very very simple store procedure as you see in the screen we create a store procedure and call it sp agent bulk import as usual we declare the errors okay and here we declare some variables in order to send an email after the process is done we declare email address and email subject and email body and the error message if there is any error happening during the process here i will set the email address where i will receive the notification and the email subject i will set it as default for contact data import plus the date i have to convert the date here to varcar because i am adding it to a text now this store procedure needs to think whether to run or not how to identify that it's very simple we make account from the staging table where the transaction status is null here i declared a variable for the account and if it is zero that means all the data there were processed then i select the error number if there is any error happen need to capture it and if the error is null i will set the error message equal to no errors if the errors bring something i will set the error message as we did before and i will set the email body equal to no new data to import plus the error message this is one case the other case if we have transaction in that staging table which is still with the status null what we do here i will say if this transaction count more than zero i will execute the store procedure as it is as we made it before last time after the store procedure finished I will capture the error. I will set the error message exactly as I did it above because this is a different case. Could be an error here, could be not. Then I will set the email body new data processed plus the cost of the transaction count above how many rows processed plus the error message if any. Here I finish with my two cases. Then I will send an email. To send an email, we have to configure a Microsoft SQL Server email. We will do that in step two. But now this is how to send an email. You execute from the MSDB a system store procedure called SP send DB mail at minimum of three variables. Recipients, which is the email address we declared above. The subject, we set the subject above. The body, we set it above in two different cases. From address, the address the email will be sent from. And then here is end. We create a sort procedure and we are ready. Second step. 
configure a Microsoft SQL Server email profile. Before we do that, Microsoft SQL Server needs a valid functioning email to be used. That could be from Outlook Express or from Gmail or from Hotmail, whatever. I created a Gmail account and in the security of this account, we have to go to less secured app access and we turn it on. Now go to management studio down there under management. You will see database mail, right click it and say configure database mail. Skip first screen and choose set up database mail by performing the following tasks. Press next. If the email feature is not activated in Microsoft SQL Server, it will ask you to activate it. Say yes. And here will show the new profile that will show if we don't have any profile. So I will put a profile name, SQL Server mail and description SQL Server 2008 enterprise. And down there I will say add to add an email and the account name. I will write the account name. If I want to put any description, we'll put the description, the email address. I will put the email address I created in Gmail and the display name will be SQL Gmail reply email. To the same email and server name this is very important it is the smtp server for the gmail i will leave this with the video description and we put the port number and down there we say basic authentication you put the email username as we created it and the password of the gmail and press next and here it shows manage the profile security this is something to make the profile public for microsoft sql server to send emails they should be a default profile so i will say this public profile and make it default then press next and here it will show some configuration system parameters and most important you can change the maximum file size in case you need to send a big attachment and then press next and the profile is getting configured and it shows success success close the screen and your sql server email profile is ready to make sure it's working you can go to database email right click it and send test email you can put here the email address you want to send to and subject body everything and send test email go check your gmail see if it is there or not here we have it so microsoft sql server email profile is configured and working sending messages third step configure microsoft sql server agent to schedule a job first of all we cannot do this at any version of microsoft sql server express therefore uh, with the video description i put a link to the Google Drive where you can install a trial official version for Microsoft SQL Server 2008 Enterprise. First of all, we need to be sure the Microsoft SQL Server agents is functioning. It's actually a service. Open Microsoft Windows Computer Management Console and go to under services and under services there is SQL Server services and there you will see SQL Server agent. Make sure it's automatic and running. If for some reason you couldn't run it, you have to check your event viewer for what is the problem. But mostly this service needs the event viewer service to be also automatic and running and the error reporting service to be the same. If you failed for any reason to make it on, you can see the log file of this service in the installation folder of Microsoft SQL Server under log. The file is sqlagent.com. Out. So once we make sure the SQL Server agent is running, we go to Management Studio and under Management there is Jobs and from Jobs we right click and say Create New Job. In general, in the job name, put a meaningful name to know what this job is doing because sometimes there is millions of jobs on the server and we don't know which is which. So I will say import contact underscore BD new to know this is working on this database. The owner always make it SA system administrator to avoid any lack of deleted user or any such permission being revoked. Then go to steps, press new and this is the first step first step in our scenario we will transfer the data from microsoft access to our staging table so i will say the step name run ssis package and the type i will change it to sql server integration services package and run as that will be connected automatically according to the type then down there in these tabs we go to general and change the package source to file system and 
down there in the package we browse the file we created in step number one and something very important we have to go to execution option and make it use 32 bit run time and this first step we go to advanced and here by default sql server says on success go to the next step leave it as it is and on failure quit the job reporting failure that's it we leave that as it is we're not changing anything then we press ok so step one is ready step two we do the same thing in step two we will run the store procedure we wrote which is managing the whole process the store procedure called asian bulk import also in the step name i have to write that and i will make the type transact sql script and i will choose the database bd new one i will put a small command execute and i'll put the store procedure name also in advanced same thing leave it as it is then we press ok then we go to schedules and press new and i'll put the schedule name something also meaningful let us decide we will run this job every hour from 7 p.m till the next day 8 a.m on weekdays monday to friday so i have to do this in the schedule time i will choose recurring means it will repeat itself on the schedule i will choose below frequency i will choose weekly and select monday to friday on the daily frequency i will choose occurs every one hour and starting time from 1900 hours to 800 hours next day and start date end date means when i want this job to start schedule itself i will choose whenever i want let us say i will start from today end date i will set it if i want the job to stop functioning at this date now press ok and here we have the schedule is set press ok for the job go back to microsoft sql server management studio under jobs refresh you will find it there now we have to wait for 1900 hours to see what happens at 1900 hours i received an email says no new data to import because in the microsoft access file i removed all the rows so there were no new data to be there now i will put some new more data in this access file new contacts new phone numbers and i will wait for 20 hundred hours to see what happens at 20 hundred hours 8 pm i received an email says new data processed seven rows no errors because in microsoft access i put seven phone numbers and so on regardless of how the microsoft access data getting filled or getting updated this is another story could be someone doing that manually could be data crawling data scrubbing anything like that but as long as we have a, a new data source in microsoft access it will be automatically processed and imported to the data base finally please keep in your mind very important things number one the server should be online in order to get this job fired if the server is off or shut down or has a network problem this job will not run second the schedule time and the schedule date inside any asian job is actually the time and the date of the server where is a sql server installed third if we schedule the job to run on certain frequency it will not run the next schedule unless it finished the previous one example if i run it every hour at seven o'clock it started to run but it couldn't finish till eight because of, for example slow connection or huge data processing at eight o'clock it will not run i will lose the schedule at eight o'clock maybe it will finish and run again at nine or ten depends when it finished sometimes this is very important to estimate how long the job will take in order to put the right schedule every hour or every day or every two hours whatever we have the batch to be comfortably done on the server and i think that should be it thank you very much for your time and if you like this video please subscribe and share it it might be useful for someone else see you next time Peace out.